And my mom got scared and said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. Now this is a story all about how my life got split, turned upside down. And I'd like to take the man who just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. coming out in seven fucking days and i need to know what the fuck the vibes are because are we staying up on the 6 and at 12 a.m on the dot we go on the kindle and we all read it are we rereading fourth wing right before the launch so it's fresh in our head like i kind of want to reread it because as you see i tapped the shit out of this book like are you kidding I feel like we should all reread it just so it's fresh in our head. By the way, this is my limited edition copy. Everyone keeps asking me about it. I have not read it on this copy. I just read it on my regular one, but this is stunning. But let's be honest. On the 7th, as soon as the book fucking drops, you know I will be reading it nonstop. And I will devour it in less than 24 hours. I promise you that. We need to talk about this book. Any longtime followers of me know that I read Speak a couple months back and thought it was incredible. But if you want something similar to Speak that will absolutely mess with you, The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This is her debut novel, and it is absolutely mind-boggling. Of course, super heavy on the trigger warnings. Uh, this book surrounds a girl who is R-worded right before she goes into high school by her brother's best friend. And watching the way this poor girl just implodes on herself and her own life is both super interesting, but incredibly sad. And the way the author shows the slight changes throughout her four years of high school is absolutely well done and incredible. This book is so sad. It had me crying in the club at the end. But it feels like a very real depiction of things that people do after something incredibly traumatic happens to them. So it was a bit of an eye-opener. Totally would recommend unless you are not okay with the trigger warning. Good morning, my little readers! Oh, we're currently reading Court of the Empire Queen, and let me fucking tell you. This goddamn book, I honestly feel like people on Goodreads are just like unhappy with their lives because this has a pretty low rating on Goodreads and I, I don't know why. I think people on Goodreads just do not like anything at all because I am like two-thirds done with this book and now I feel like I could form a full-on opinion about it and let me fucking tell you this has smut and this has plot whoever said that this doesn't have a plot doesn't know what a plot means because this has fucking plot and I am interested in the plot that it has and the amount of spice this book has will have you fucking shaking once again, still, every single chapter is filled with some kind of spice in there, and personally, I am loving it. There's never too much spice, and I must know how this ends tonight. I am a little bit more than halfway done with Keeping 13, and let's talk about it. Now, I am convinced that Johnny is a book boyfriend that simply does not exist. He is perfect in any fucking way, shape, and form. But I do have to tell you something. Half of these tabs aren't even for Johnny and Shannon. Gypsy literally makes me like cry in tears from laughter. I simply do not understand how a book that deals with the topic of domestic violence and abuse can be this fucking funny. Like the scenes in this book with like Johnny and Gypsy, or honestly just Gypsy, fucking hell. The things that come out of his mouth, I I don't even know how to comprehend. I honestly could, at this point, just read about their friendship because that shit is so funny. I... 
I'm just here for the vibes at this point. Nunca le digas a nadie, a nadie, que fui yo quien te dejó. Porque yo nunca te hubiera dejado. We are T minus nine hours until Iron Flame comes out. Today's Monday, obviously, which means it is a preparation for Iron Flame Day. I literally opened my fourth wing on a random page, and as you can see, I really like this one. Anyways, I decided that I'm not gonna reread the book because I don't usually, I've never in my life read a book, and I feel like I never will, but unless it's Akatar, but that's a different story. Um, so I think I'm gonna go tonight, right now. Um, through the book and I'm just gonna read every single thing I tapped because I trust myself and my fucking opinions when I was reading this book and I'm hoping that everything important is tagged. I need to immerse myself back into this universe before I start Iron Flame. Anyway, tomorrow is gonna be a good day. Come with me to speed edit a video in one day. As you can see, I am very prepared. The reason I am speed editing this video is that it is October 29th and I am making a video about Preptober, which is for NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo's in November, Preptober's in October. It is October 29th, I am running out of time. I have finished the rough edit, so now all I have to do is add the screen recordings on top, add the sound effects, add the music, add the text, and oh my god, I'm gonna be here forever. <laughs> yes you are, you've been here for four hours already, what's another three? I am about as hunched as I could possibly get over my laptop, but I decided to take a break, sip my drink, and question my life on the kitchen floor. This is my dog, this is my kitchen. Say hello to Daphne. What we're gonna come up with is how many characters? How many people? At this point, I am so sick of doing this, I wish I could be doing anything else. I have never had this much trouble editing a video. But as you can see, I am back on the grind. I am editing, I am clipping, I am moving, I am doing the editor girly things. I am fucking killing it. Yeah, I am miserable by this point, but the grind does not stop. It is 9.30, and I am done all the overlay of the screen recordings. Right now what I'm doing is I am adding all the effects and music and titles. I'm making good progress though. It is 10.30 and I am exporting the video. All I have to do is make a thumbnail and I can upload it and I can be done. At this point, I have been editing on and off for roughly six hours, six to eight hours. I'm grabbing the thumbnail now. Look at that face. Look at that open mouth, stupid face. Anyway, not that anyone's curious, but I do all my thumbnails through Canva. This thumbnail's good enough. Okay, it is just shy of 11 and I have finished this up and now it is uploading. All in all, it took about eight hours to edit the video. It is up on my YouTube channel now, which is linked in my TikTok. Hope you guys enjoy. Love you, bye. I am not emotionally ready to be done with Keeping 13. Nope. I finished it last night, and let me tell you one thing. The last 200 pages of this book killed me and brought me back to life, killed me again and brought me back to life. I don't even know how to talk about this book without spoiling it for you. I'm just gonna tell you one thing. Ido and John, I fucking love you. Johnny, you have my heart forever. Gipsy, I want to have you as a friend. And Joey, I cannot fucking wait to read about you. The only negative thing I do have to say about this book, and it could be because it's an incomplete series, so maybe at one point we do get an epilogue novel or something, but there is like no real epilogue to this. Like, I would want to see where they end up 10 years from then. Like, I want to fucking see Shannon have his babies. I want to see them live together. I want to see them have the most happily ever after ever because reading this book i legitimately felt the pain they were feeling but i also felt like the butterflies that they were feeling like i'm not emotionally stable for this and i need to get a snippet of their future but since we're pausing on the series because fourth wing is coming out like literally in four days and while we wait for fourth wing i will be reading court of the vampire queens by kate roberts which what i've heard is uh, the smuttiest book ever People have said that it's literally filled with smut and no plot, and that's exactly what I need as a palate cleanser. Because after reading about so much happiness and joy, um, I need to read some fucking smutty as shit to, you know, just cleanse out my palate.
I finished Court of the Moon Fire Queens and this book has spiked quite the controversy up here. A lot of people say they loved it, a lot of people say that it's too much smut, not enough plot. Which I'm gonna say to that last sentence, impossible. If you want to read something with plot, go read fucking Agatar that has like four books in there. Anyway, I still disagree. There is, uh, there is plot in this book. What are you reading that you're saying that there's no plot? And if that's no plot, what kind of plot do you want? Yes, there is a lot, a lot of spice scenes in here, but there is also in the background, like a lot of stuff is happening in the background. Like the main character literally became a different person by the end of the book. And we watched it happen. Anyway, it gets a four star from me, not a five because I mean, it didn't blow my mind, quite frankly. There wasn't like anything extraordinary. I'm probably not gonna think about this book again, but it was a really fun read, let me tell you that. And I've read books that have all spice and no plot. And those are actually also fun. I don't know where I was going with that. The spice is the plot. I said what I said. Good morning! And I say good morning instead of morning because Iron Flame is out! Along with Love Redesign by uh, Lauren Asher, but that's no here no there. Now, do I have three orders of Iron Flame already on the way to my house? Yes, I do. Are we still gonna go to Barnes & Noble as soon as they open to get one? Yes, we will. So let's go. I just pulled up to Barnes & Noble and I think I'm the only crazy person around because there is absolutely nobody next to the store. They open in one minute. I just saw someone walk in there open. Do you see her? Because I see her. Look what's here. Also, she's fucking thick. This is 630 pages and oh my fucking god. I already know this is gonna be over before it even begins. Which is traumatizing in itself. It's taking everything in me to not just peek at the last page to just see like what's gonna happen but like I, I won't i promise i won't i'll just sit here and admire her for a little bit though I have been dying to do one of these. So let's find out what my favorite book trope is, even though I have a pretty good idea. Amnesia or academic rivals. I've never read a book with an amnesia trope, which I, I honestly think I would hate it. I already hate it. So academic rivals. Slow burn friends to lovers. Friends to lovers, fuck slow burn. Fast burn, age gap. Uh, age gap. Fake dating, love triangle, fuck love triangles, don't ev don't even. Second chance, found family, uh, second chance, brother's best friend, enemies to lovers, fuck. I love both. I love both, but I have to go enemy to lovers. Work adversaries, pregnancy. I only read one book with like a pregnancy trope and I did like it, so we'll go with pregnancy. Grumpy versus sunshine, rich versus poor. Grumpy and sunshine a hundred percent every single time. Friends to lovers, academic rivals. Is academic rivals like enemies to lovers? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Fuck, I don't know. I'll go friends to lovers. Fake dating, age gap. Oof. Fake dating. Enemies to lovers, second chance. Mm -hmm. Enemies to lovers. Grumpy sunshine, pregnancy. Grumpy sunshine. Fake dating, friends to lovers. Oh, fake dating. This, this, this is where I cannot choose. I knew we were gonna end up here. Grumpy sunshine, enemies to lovers. I like when it's grumpy sunshine and enemies to lovers in one. That's the ultimate trope. I just have to go enemies to lovers. Enemies to lovers and fake dating. Enemies to lovers. Just, I just love when they hate each other until they don't.